You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 147, Static X. Hosted by Dan Terry. It's fucking thrash. And Joseph Wren. I'm leaving every single one of those in. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if you're with Stupid, and so am I, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. Industrial December continues to push it right into Static X. Hey, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. That's what I said. But you are. Exactly. I'm not. I am. What is there to say about Static X that hasn't been said before? Hopefully a lot of things, because here we are. I think that Static X is an industrial onslaught of disco metal that everybody loves to dance to, and they are the glorious representation of simplicity in new metal. Do people dance to Static X? I do. I don't think I ever have. And that's like my problem, right? That's absolutely your issue, sir. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to push it as far as we can. <laughs> and I don't hate this. And it's cold. So cold. We are. I don't know how much more I can do. Meaningless. Piggy hammer. Oh, wait, that's something else. Well, before we take a Wisconsin death trip to Cheese Town, I want to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, then you can find everything discography discussion at discussmetal.com. We are on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five-star reviews. We love five-star reviews here on Discography Discussion, and I'm going to read one for you right now. Leader87 wrote, Love it! I'm loving this podcast. It has turned me on to a bunch of great bands I would never have heard otherwise. If I had one complaint... It would be the way Joe pronounces gent. For you reference. mean degent, right? I, I, I mean gent. <laughs> you've been called out, sir. Show me what you've got. He says it kind of drives me nuts. I'm just going to look past it, though. <laughs> Keep up the great work, guys. In all seriousness, did anybody ever decide exactly how you're supposed to say degent? Well, yeah, everybody calls it gent, except you. And half of the populace, because it's one of those words that nobody wanted to agree on. First it was gent, then it was degent, then it was gent. So I don't remember you ever, tell I, me. I don't remember it ever being degent. I'm just being a dick now, but, you know, how, how you doing? <laughs> oh, man. We got some awesome comments over on Instagram, because that's a thing that we do now. On our discussion about the band Nemic, DJames7D says, Mechanical Spin Phenomena is one of my favorite albums. Killer band. Infinite Geist, or Infinity Geist, I think it's Infinite Geist, says, Mechanical Spin Phenomenon and Audio Injected Soul are truly underplayed and sorely underappreciated pieces of art. I miss this band and Michael at vocals. The Callous Clone says, I really dug Mechanical Spin Phenomena and Audio Injected Soul when they came out. I still spin MSP from time to time. The Fear Factory vibes were what grabbed me originally. I think we mentioned that in the episode, too, that there were a little bit of Fear Factory vibes uh, going on with that band. Like, if Fear Factory had been a newer band with newer influences, they probably would have sounded a little bit like Nemic. And we'd still be listening to it. Absolutely. That was a great band, man. I can't get over it. They've they've gone into my regular rotation. Jeff strikes again. How you doing? Jeff strikes back. He will have his <laughs> revenge. The rise of the Jeff Walker. Oh, I didn't even mean that to be funny, and it was. So, Dan, tell me about Static X. Well, Static X was, that's right, I'm making a stance. <laughs> Static X was an American industrial metal band from Los Angeles, California. They got together in 1994, and the most consistent member of the band was frontman, vocalist, and guitarist Wayne Static until his untimely demise in 2014. I'm sure his fans will appreciate you referring to it as an untimely demise. It was completely untimely, man. There's a lot worse people out there in the world than Wayne Static. There's a lot of bands from the late 90s, early 2000s, new metal ball of amazing that we all listen to. Static X was a band that was in the Coal Chamber ballpark, but they had the electronics and the dance beats. So they were more in the Rammstein ballpark for some portions of my listening youth. Much heavier, though. They are their own thing. Nobody 
can play an open droning note and make it this heavy. I don't know how Static X did it. I've heard them referred to multiple times as disco metal, a title that I don't know how you come to other than they have electronics in the background that play a ongoing drum loop. It's fun to refer to them as disco metal, but no, musically they don't have a whole lot in common with disco. Uh, I do like the term death metal disco that they kind of popularized, although it's funny that they would have that because I think the band is neither death metal nor disco. Although Wayne Static definitely had a delivery that was much more aggressive than what a lot of other bands were doing at the time. I mean, the first time I heard Wisconsin Death Trip, I thought it was the heaviest fucking record I'd ever heard. I don't think it was the heaviest record, but... It was intense. It was straightforward. It was the definition of play this riff for the next three to five minutes, and whatever comes out of it is what you get. Well, dude, there was a long time where, for me, it was it was Static X and Slipknot. Like, there were no other bands. I always put Static X in the Cold Chamber mindset. I don't know if musically they're like Cold Chamber. Vocally, sure. Uh, I, think, I think Dez and Wayne are almost interchangeable with each other at times. That and Dope, when we listen to Dope. Oh, yeah, that well, one time. Know. Yeah, it's interesting that that Dope would have any type of vocal similarity to Wayne Static. But anyway, (laughs) you know, it's funny, though, because, like, this record, like I said, I thought was the heaviest thing ever. And it wasn't necessarily because the drumming was super complex, like Slipknot, or or that the vocals were, like, a straight growl scream like Slipknot. I mean, they were that, but I don't know. Just the way Wayne delivered in this super percussive, deliberate manner, but then, like, he'd get to the end of something, just go, ooh, or, like... Just do something that I really wasn't expecting to hear. And I think the insanity of his vocal delivery over very simple music made him the focus of everything. And I think that that was the most instrumental part of their sound, no pun intended, uh, in that he was just this over-the-top character. The beard and the hair helped. Yes. I thought he wore a beard wig for years because it just looked so unnatural. If it looked very strange, like I, I can only imagine how much of the ozone is missing because of Wayne Static and his hair. <laughs> but I, you know, all of that, all of that aside, like Wisconsin Death Trip is absolutely brutal in your face. I think it stands up now. Like I feel like a band could come out with something like Wisconsin Death Trip today, and it would get just as huge as it did then, because people would be like, "Oh, what's this new genre that they're playing?" And it's not even necessarily that they're new, it's just that they're mixing new metal and industrial music in a way that other bands had done similarly. Uh, You know, like Power Man 5000, I'd kind of lump into the same category as Static X. Hell yeah. You know, uh, or even even some of the heavier Rob Zombie stuff. Uh, I don't think Rob Zombie ever really made it into the metal realm, whereas everything that Static X did was very decidedly metal. And I don't really even think that the industrial elements really overshadow anything else. Like, they're there, and you would notice if they were gone. But this band was all about about the chunk, about the, about the heaviness. 100%. And, uh, I mean, Wisconsin Death Trip is just an unrelenting fucker of a record. Every song has the riff, the vocals, and the backbeat. It's very intentional. It charges forward. Wayne's not going to play a clean chorus and then go back to the heavy part. It's still just straight ahead. This is the riff. It's got Push It, Bled for Days, December is on here, I Am, I'm with Stupid. These are Static X standout tracks, not just standout tracks on this record. These are the songs that define Static X to many people. A couple of mine are on Machine, but we'll get to that momentarily. Well, Wisconsin Death Trip, and I'm just going to say it, is my favorite Static X album. And that's because I don't like to throw this title on records very often, but this is a perfect record. It is a perfect introduction to the world for Static X. They don't slouch here. They don't give you any room to breathe at all. It's just go, 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 unrelenting. And it's everything that I like about a good metal record, and it doesn't rely on really choruses to speak of it's a lot of fucking freaky sound clips heavy riffs some maniac screaming and a woman with a shovel and this lady with this fucking (laughs) with a fucking shovel man (laughs) stupid but uh i think that uh i think that this record is 
if it had been a one and done, I would still consider this one of the greatest bands ever, just because it had that type of it had that type of effect on me as a young person. And Static X was very influential in me getting into heavier styles of music because I was like, okay, guys, hear me out. What if they just scream the whole time? I'm not sure I get what you're saying. So we should scream some of the time. No, 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 all, all the time. Just, just okay. scream all, all the time. So let me make sure I get this. We're going to write the song like we normally do, but you're going to scream most of the time. I'm still going to sing at that point, right? No, I, I no, just scream the whole time. I'm not following you. Just that's just it. You just you just scream every time that you think you know what I should sing here. Just don't. Just scream and and just play heavy riffs and like no 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 guitar solos, nothing fancy. Can okay. I wear my ridiculously oversized shorts? Yes, all black. All black combat boots. Maybe throw maybe throw in some like um well like I don't know, throw some like green hair dye in there. Oh dude, you can wear your giant hot topic pants with the straps and the buckles in the back. You know where they're like giant bell bottoms that start at your waist? The one with the Dreamcast in the back pocket. Dan Terry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I played a lot of Dreamcast and played a lot of static acts. We have a video to prove it. Oh my goodness. I, I used to listen to Wisconsin Death Trip on repeat. While I would play San Francisco Rush 2049, fuck and that I, game. I'd go into the I'd go into the stunt mode. Which if you haven't seen the stunt mode on Rush 2049, get a fucking Dreamcast and play that game. We're a Nintendo 64. I I'm think calling it's there. bullshit when they added wings to the cars, dude. It was awesome. You could do like 10,000 flips. Anyway, uh, Wisconsin Death Trip is a perfect album. You're never gonna convince me otherwise. It is beautiful in its simplicity. 2001. Machine. This album has one of the hottest opens I've ever heard. This is the only time that I ever thought to myself that, oh my god, the whole death metal disco thing. Like it makes sense because they're doing a little like a death metal thing at the beginning. At least it was like my interpretation of death metal. This is some of the heaviest shit I'd ever heard at that point, and it definitely set me up for an experience that I wasn't necessarily going to get the whole time. This record has get to the gore. We've got cold. We've got black and white. I even like structural defect. I like I hate this. Amazing. Because that's how I feel when I'm listening to songs like cold. This is not. This album is like half Wisconsin death trip and half I don't know what the fuck. I like what I'm hearing. It's more Wisconsin death trip. It's faster in some places. It's slower in other places. It doesn't take away from the record that we have cold or black and white that are arguably slower than what they were doing on Wisconsin Death Trip, but they're still locked in the groove. And the simplicity of a Static X record is very well represented on this one. You like it because the riffs and the heavy vocals. I agree. And Wayne had a way... I'm sing screaming thing on this record. You know, you get to the chorus of Cold. He's not really singing, but you can tell that he has the ability to do more than just the onslaught that we know him for at this point. Here's the thing, man. The, the onslaught is so profound on this record and on the previous. Do you remember when we had that discussion about, okay, we should just scream the whole time? Yeah, I thought I got it, but I still wasn't sure. So but you're you saying clearly... scream all the time. I'm saying scream all the time. However, Static X decided that they were going to, well, try to mix it up a little bit, which I totally understand. As a music critic, I realized that they could not have put out six with De Wisconsin Death Trips. Just imagine if they had. <laughs> you know, it's whenever I say a record's perfect, there's pretty much no way in hell the, f the one before it or the one after it's going to be. And this is kind of uh, this is kind of more of the same. Uh, as a fan, I'm still definitely on board with Static X. But then you have songs like Cold, which just come out of nowhere and show a totally different side of Wayne Static. Like, first of all, holy shit, he actually sings? Kinda. He doesn't really sing, he kind of whispers, <laughs> and then just starts shouting again. Because, yes. like, at some point he's like, this is all I know how to do. And, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but this, this album did start moving in a more commercial direction for the band, which is great news if you're in Static X. Not necessarily as good a news if you're like, you know, Dan Terry. But, uh, you know, who, who doesn't want any of the bands that he likes to succeed? Uh, but 
this record was awesome, but it is definitely like, okay, we're a huge band now. Wisconsin Death Trip was just like a, a once in a lifetime thing that, you know, we, we did it. People heard of us, but now we actually have to deliver like a single. And that's what Cold was. Black and white too. Black and white. And, uh, you know, I hate this was the single that they put out when they're like, okay, we need to keep those Wisconsin Death Trip fans. He means this is not. Yeah, they, they went all over the place. Like you could, They had singles for the rock stations and singles for the metal stations. And um, I'm not going to criticize this record. I think this record is really close to Wisconsin Death Trip. It's the next record. And it's the next record. As a fan, I'm satisfied with it. But you guys are going to get all up in my fucking face and push me, aren't you? You're going to fucking push it. No pun intended. 2003, Shadow Zone. I'm not going to lie to you. It made me a little upset. But then it just started being heavy again. It was more tuned down Death Trip. But it wasn't so artificial. The beats are there, but they're backed off a little bit. I don't know who made that choice, but as a fan of Static X, you want the beat. I want the death metal disco. I don't exactly get that here. Shadow Zone doesn't beat you like Wisconsin Death Trip did. God, this is just like the Norma Jean episode. Every album, I'm going to be like, well, not as good as Wisconsin Death Trip. But, uh, you know, that's just true, though, in this case. Like, it's Wisconsin Death Trip, but less than. I use this example all the time, but it's like Wisconsin Death Trip is a glass of water and Shadow Zone is if you took that glass of water and you poured it out all over the place and let it just make a mess on your floor. It's made of the exact same elements that were in the glass of water, but now it's all spread out. It's 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 um, mixed with other agents. It's not quite the same thing. It's trying to keep the old fans on board, but it's obvious that they want to go for a more melodic, more accessible sound, which again is fantastic news if you're in Static X. I'm calling bullshit. It's 2003. The record doesn't sound like 2001 or 1999. I believe this record is another victim of the early days of commercial digital recording. The records just didn't sound the same. And it didn't make sense why, other than somebody decided it's a lot cheaper to make the record now with this laptop. That's not even really my issue with it. It's valid, but it's not my issue. My issue is just the idea of, hey, do you guys like all that heavy shit? And everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, we're going to slow it down here for a minute. The fuck? Why Why would you do that? At that point, don't ask. Wayne, si- <laughs> Wayne, Wayne sings too much on this record. And I think, I think Wayne has a perfectly fine singing voice. I just don't care about it. It's not what I want. And as we all know, all music ever made ever is just based on what I want. But I think that in this case, I, I can't see long-time Static X fans being like, yeah, man, this, this is this is the next uh, Static X album. This is great. It's definitely a step down in the songwriting department. However, some of the choruses are undeniably good. Like, once you wrap your head around the concept of a chorus on a Static X album, because before that, they kind of just had hooks, right? Like, not full-on choruses, except Cole. They held you with the riff and the overall tone of the song they gave you something to chant along with or scream along with i hate this black and white cold we're so cold push it meaningless it's now with shadow zone we actually have a full-on chorus to sing along with he's still not singing he's got a bit of a lynn straight thing going on where he's just yelling his way through the otherwise melodic chorus right it's not bad If I was a fan in 2003 picking up Shadow Zone, I'd be a little upset, but I don't think I'd hate this record. I didn't get on board with Static X until 2004, 2005. I was aware of the band. I had heard Wayne's contribution to the Queen of the Dam soundtrack. Obviously, Cold from Machine was one of my favorite songs, but I wasn't big into the band until later. I was a fan of Wisconsin Death Trip when it came out. And so to watch the, and to be honest with you, I probably stopped listening to the band as a teenager, uh, probably, oh, I don't know, probably right after Machine. And uh, and it's not even because I hated the band, I just kind of stopped caring. You were listening to Zayo? Yeah. 2002, Dan called. I got into heavier (laughs) heavier shit, so I just went 
I went down the metalcore rabbit hole that I still live in. I just set up a house inside of the metalcore rabbit hole. But uh, so to, to go back and listen to this, because I was excited to do this episode because I thought, you know, what? Why? Where did they go after after Machine? You know, and I'm a little disappointed with it. Like there are, there are parts on this album where they'll just straight up drop everything out and he'll just sing clean, and I'm just not a big fan of that. Not even because he has a bad voice, but it's just not what I want out of a Static X album. And uh, it's okay though. Like I said, this record still, the band still has very high quality songwriting, and there is a certain amount of perfection in simplicity. That this band captured, but uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a big fan of the clean vocals, and I don't think everybody was because uh, they definitely toned that shit down. Like it's not it's not all over the record, but it's there enough. It's a little bit darker record. It's the difference between Follow the Leader and Issues or Untouchables. It's just a darker record. It's definitely more personal. Not that I'm really gonna dig into Wayne Static lyrics because I think it's a lot of nonsense. I liked the scary horror movie vibe of Wisconsin Death Trip so much that, you know, after a while, you know, you get three albums in and dude's talking about his feelings and you're like, oh, that's cool. He had stuff to say. I know. It's okay. Honestly, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble coming up with actual good criticisms for this because, to be honest, these records are fine. Like, it's obvious that they're the same band on all three records, or at least... Wayne is the same on all three records, to be more accurate. Um, like, you're still getting the Static X, ex- static X experience. Kind of like what I've said about uh, what I've said about Dillinger's Escape Plan was that, like, if you're only here for that Wisconsin Death Trip sound, they definitely try to incorporate some of that into each release. 2005, start a war. That's kind of what happened, right, a few years prior? Yeah, something like that. What's interesting about this album is that they kind of go back, I think, more to the machine sound. They don't go straight Wisconsin Death Trip, but they definitely um, they, they take the melodic songs from Machine and make a whole album out of that. To me, this record sounds like a band that's trying to hold on to the new metal sound of the early 2000s. I don't dislike Start a War. I think it's a heavy album. I think it's another record by Static X. There's not as much death metal disco going on, but it's there. The backbeat's there. This one sounds like a band who's trying to play faster, play more intense. Almost like you showed up with your newest batch of riffs, and everybody in the room was just tired of playing slow. So you immediately put on Kill 'Em All by Metallica and said, okay, so we gotta play these riffs, but we gotta play them faster. We gotta get more attention. We gotta be more punk rock. Because as heavy as this record is, it's a little bit more punk rock, Wayne Static. It is. He's a little bit more all over the place vocally. Um, He does a lot of just weird off-time screaming, yelling, ranting. But he always ties it together with, like, a nice chorus. And, uh, again, like, if you hated choruses, then you stopped listening to this band after Wisconsin Death Trip, which doesn't make you wrong, but, you know... uh, I, you know, I got through it. I got into it. I started appreciating Static X because, honestly, this is the Static X I've had for three albums now, and so I'm a little bit more into it as far as as far as what they do, how they craft their songs, and how they're still kind of trying to break. And I think that was the biggest problem with Static X is that they didn't break like the other new metal bands did. They were on tour with Stained. They were on tour with the Cold Chambers and the Power Man Five Thousand. Yeah, and they did moderately well. It's not like they it's not like they were a failure band, but you know, they never they never reached the same heights as like a slipknot. They were more of a niche. Yeah. Well, because they were playing like actually heavy new metal. Whereas a lot of the new metal bands at this time were pretty much abandoning that sound completely and going for a more mainstream rock approach. Whereas Static X kind of always just stuck to their shit, you know? <laughs> uh it, it was never um it was never compromised in the same way that like Disturbed or Linkin Park or even Korn would eventually compromise their sound for something a little bit more mainstream. You know, they're they're playing new metal to be heavy, which a lot of people really weren't at that time. They're just being heavy. I don't think they were playing new metal on purpose. They were just playing heavy music. Riffs dropped D, tuned down a whole step. We're in C. We're in B. We're playing harmonics. It's all about the drone and the doom doom that we all loved. It's like everybody was listening to Mike Mooshock and said, we want to do that for the next 10 years. 
And Wayne just never stopped doing it. Wayne never stopped doing <laughs> it. Yeah, pretty much. Neither did I. It's totally fine. I mean, like I said, this record is okay. It's serviceable. I, I don't see anybody being upset with it. And it's still done with the same high quality that all the Static X albums had had. And as we get into the next album... 2007. Take all that shit I said and just throw it out the window. Cannibal. Just throw it out the window, guys, because this is not even Static X. This is Wayne Static being like, okay, here's the deal. Metal needs guitar solos. So we're going to add a shitty guitar solo to every single song on this album. And we're going to take that perfection and simplicity that we have, and we're going to cut out the perfection part, and we're just going to be super fucking simple and basic. And that is what this record is. It, it reeks of we just threw this shit together just now. I wonder what happened. I wonder what the thought process was. I need money. The decision making that went into it. I need money. When you do a simple record and it's your fifth album, it usually stems from, I don't want to spend the next six months to eight months to one year of my life putting together another machine or another Wisconsin death trip. I want to just go in and make an album and play the songs. And when we're done, we're done. Hey, Joe, can I have some money? Uh, yeah, dude. Hang on a second. Somebody, Is this enough? Sure, that's perfect. Excellent. Let me throw 10 tracks together. Somebody got a laptop and tried to record a digital record again in 2007 well, he and did not the- put as much time into it. I don't hate Cannibal, but I have a hard time buying into the simple record for the sake of I didn't want to put a lot of time into it. I have a hard time with that. I think it's just thrown together. Like, yeah, I got some ideas, some riff ideas, and... Some of these songs you can tell could have been fleshed out into full-on Fetic X songs, but instead he's just like, we're going to start it off with this weird grind part, and I'm just going to yell over it, and I'm going to add guitar solos that don't really fit. I mean, like, nobody remembers Static X for their amazing guitar solos. Like, nobody cares. That's not what it's about. It's about the beat and the intensity, and I feel like a lot of cases these guitar solos actually take away from that. A guitar solo is fine, but, like, it doesn't work when a band like Static X. It sounds contrived, especially when you had zero on any of the albums and now you got a fucking guitar solo on every song except like one or two of them. It's the anti Saint Anger. <laughs> Maybe. We put the solos in because fuck you, that's why. Maybe that's where they went. Maybe that's where the s- solos from Saint Anger went. I, I just, it just sounds half hearted. It sounds uninspired. Wayne, Wayne gives a good vocal performance as usual, but again, it's like, kind of like showing up for work and clocking in. I just I don't think he really put a lot of a lot of time or effort into this release, and it really shows. Because like I'll take the last album over this one any day. The record sounds thin. It sounds like we didn't have as much time or didn't want to put as much time into it, and that could very well be the case. And if that's what they wanted to do, fine with me. But I can't sit here and tell you that Cannibal is as good of a record as anything that has come before it. And I don't feel like the record was bad on purpose like I do with St. Anger. I mean, if you had told me that this was like a collection of early demos for Static X, I might believe that. But to accept this as a new release is just kind of not that, like, it's just not that great. Like, it's just, it's a bad record. And, um, you know, if you just like hearing Wayne Static be heavy, I mean, I guess that's fine. But, like, you can listen to that on a good Static X albums. You know what you could be listening to? 2009, Cult of Static. Cult of Static. So you know how I said they didn't put any effort in the last album? You may have mentioned it once or twice or 17 times. Yeah. Um, well, they put about like 8% more into this album. You're not a fan of it, are you? I am not a fan of the Cult of Static. Or cults at all, for that matter. Uh, if you ever are in a situation where, you know, group think is, uh, is, is the only thing, then you need to get out. He does a lot of the same stupid shit that he does on Cannibal on this record. And I just, I don't know, man. It's like their guitars getting turned down more on every record. I can't tell you where it's coming from. These last two records, I know the fan base adores them. But the quality of songs is completely, completely, 100% a step down from Shadow Zone even start a war so i don't understand the mindset in 2007 2009 the only thing i can come up with is a lot of drugs they did this themselves and just turned it in and said here's the new record guys it just doesn't make sense to me 
I really can't find the words for it, but it just doesn't even sound like Static X. It just, everything sounds so random, like the songs weren't even put together. And, you know, some bands get away with that. Like, people call that, like, what, avant-garde, where they just go completely off the fucking map. Yeah, it's called You Have to Take Drugs to Truly Appreciate This. But it's not like that, even. Like, there's nothing trippy about this. It's just random shit thrown together onto a record. Right, if I showed up with this and said, dude, I wrote 27 songs, you'd say, okay, let's start putting them together. No, dude, this is the record. No, it's not. Yeah, not even close. And I don't know if this is just, like, a result of one guy being in charge. I just think it was like, well, we're just going to do the Static X thing. I'll just bang some riffs out and throw some solos in there. People like solos, right? And then I'll just, I'll kind of scream over it a little bit and, you know, add some singing whenever I want to. But there's, there's no song craft on this at all. I'm not into this at all. Like, this is just... This almost sounds more like somebody is making fun of Static X than it sounds like an actual Static X record. I'm not into it. I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, uh, his solo record that he put out after this, Pig Hammer, a lot better than this. More Static X than Static X? Totally. It, I've, I've been asking around why that wasn't just a Static X album, but um, it just it wasn't for some reason. I think maybe if it had been it would be more fondly remembered but this was just like fuck the band's gone they're nothing like they were before and i kind of feel like they're making fun of me for listening to this uh pig hammer on the other hand is just wayne static but sounds just like static x in every way and uh you know i i consider it part of their discography but according to my own rules that's not so it's absolutely not i can't get on i can't get in you know i can't say it is but you want to talk about pig hammer on patreon listen yeah sure Okay, uh, we'll make that to, happen uh, in a couple weeks for you. But, you know, instead of listening to Cult of Static, you know, maybe listen to Big Hammer instead. It's just almost like he gave up at the end. Like, he was like, I can put out a Static X record, and I can do some tours, and I can make this much money, you know, each, each time. There's no progression of sound. Like, you, you can pretty much tell that the band was essentially done after Start of War. Was the band really done? Or was the quality of songs just not as good? They couldn't keep up. I think they gave up. They just didn't put a lot of effort into the song, right? And they just figured, you know, we'll just throw it together and, you know, maybe some shit will stick. Maybe it won't, you know? I don't think it was completely half-assed, but it definitely isn't up to par with their, with their previous material. And that's really sad because I really like Static X as a band. Final thoughts on Static X? Dan. I think that Static X is a band that really solidified their place in heavy music in the late 90s, early 2000s. They were absolutely the shit. They were super heavy, super aggressive, and I I loved everything about them, especially on their first record, Wisconsin Death Trip. And if I had to make a recommendation, I would just tell everybody to listen to that record. If you like a more melodic Static X, listen to maybe the next two or three records. Once you get to Cannibal, though, just stop, man. They're, they're basically making fun of you. I think Static X is one of the bands that we all listen to when we want to get our new metal fix. But we don't want to be just dragged along the dirt road like Coal Chamber or Classic Stained. Static X had heavy guitars intense vocals and a dance beat they had a fucking backbeat of electronics and it wasn't just a backing track that filled in a bunch of gaps that the band couldn't play live simple intense and we all loved it so if you're a fan of static x listen to static x if you've never listened to static x go back and listen to machine wisconsin death trip and if you're still into it keep going through the discography you will find songs that you like even on the records that are not that great can we talk about the reunion tour for a second (laughs) what do you want to talk about i want to answer the question should fans of static x be going to the reunion shows in my opinion it's sold as a memorial to static x but it feels more like the band just trying to keep going It's unfair. I'm not in the band. I'm not those people. I didn't know Wayne. But this idea that Eisel Dope is going to show up and not be Wayne and not be himself, but be a character that portrays the lead singer of Static X, I'm into that. I'm okay with that. Snot tried to keep going when Lynn Strait passed away. I was into that too. I've seen some of the live performances on YouTube. They're doing just fine. So what's the problem? 
I don't think that there's anything wrong. Well, first of all, people can do whatever the fuck they want. That's fine. Personally, I just don't think paying tribute to somebody should involve you putting on a death mask of them and singing songs trying to sound like them. I, I don't know. I just... Something about it doesn't sit right with me. It's not something that I would go and see. And um, I think it could actually be interpreted as disrespectful. But that's just like my opinion, man. To me, it just seems wrong. I would rather see a hologram of Wayne Static than see a guy wearing a Wayne Static mask. What's your album of the week? Oh, Pig Hammer by Wayne Static. Absolutely. We have that on the Patreon schedule now. Perfect. Subscribe for $1 and you can hear Dan's review of Pig Hammer. <laughs> For me, it's Nuclear Nanosecond by Tyrant of Death. Nice. Take us out, DFT. Have you ever been listening to this podcast and asked yourself, why don't they ever talk about the bands I want them to talk about? Or why do they take awesome bands and intentionally make me wait like 50 episodes for me to hear that episode? Well, you you can be more involved in that process if you'd like. All you have to do is reach out to us. You can reach out to us through several avenues on the internet, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can join the Facebook official group for discography discussion. You can join us on Instagram under discography discussion. You can tweet at us at Discuss Metal or at Discuss Metal Dan or Discuss Metal Joe. You can send us an email at Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. You can even join our Discord server. There's a link to it in our show notes if you click there and you can talk to all the wonderful people on Discord. And on that note, this has been episode 147 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things discography discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks.